Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we have a new pen day. So stick around and I'm going to also give you some tips on how to use fountain pens. Some real basics I got, I thought it was a great idea and that new pen day might be a great time to do that. So stick around. Okay, I <laughs> could not wait. I already unboxed as far as the actual box that this was shipped in. It arrived extremely fast. This is a bespoke or, you know, a one of a kind pen that I got from an Etsy seller who handmade this pen. So there is no other pen exactly like it, but a lot of Etsy sellers have beautiful one of a kind pens like this that are hand turned. So if you search for hand turned fountain pens or handmade fountain pens or abalone fountain pens or resin or um, acrylic fountain pens, you'll see some gorgeous pens. This one happened to come in this beautiful box and just to move this so you can see against the white, it came in this beautiful cushiony, like I don't know what that material is, but it's, it's a really nice material. And it has the silver and it has the black. This I believe is going to be called Zodiac Pen Company. When I got it, it was called Logs to Treasures because the guy who makes the pens also makes handmade woodworks. And so he's just breaking off the pen part so that it's more direct and clear that one is for wood stuff and one is for pen stuff. So if you are looking for him, Logs to Treasures or Zodiac Pen Company is who I got this one from. But I, okay, I got this because I really wanted a diamond cast fountain pen like made of diamond cast materials so that it looks like it has little flecks of diamond particles, the stuff that comes off when you're playing with diamonds and making cutting diamonds. And so I searched that and found this. So let me just give you the same unboxing that I had when I first opened this. I could not believe it and I immediately made a reel. Look how beautiful. Okay, so here is the card, Logs to Treasures. And look at this pen. I couldn't even wait for sunlight like a dummy. It is, it literally looks like it's glowing. So it's in this nice cushion. It has this like satiny look material. And then here is the pen itself. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't. Oh, it is so pretty. So I, I love this because to me, this looks exactly like a nebula. I'm just giving you like the slowest roll, but look how absolutely gorgeous this material is. Like how stunning, how it glows, all these blue flecks that come out. It feels really good. There's no, it's kind of a cigar shape, so it tapers a little bit at the ends, but there's no, there's no step down here. It's just completely smooth. I can't stop looking at it, especially this part I ugh, and this part. I can't stop. I'm going to give you another shot in the daytime when I can wait, but this is nighttime. Oh, okay. So one thing that people like to know when you're talking about fountain pens is how many turns to open. So here's one full turn, one and a little bit more. So one and a half, maybe one and a quarter turns. You can pick what fountain pen, uh, sorry, nib unit you want. So in, if I were to hold this, pinch this, and twist it to the left, this whole nib unit would come out. It would look like a little, like this, like the black part inside of there. Um, this is the whole section of this pen, but you know, you can just twist this out and there's a little black piece inside, just that black piece, which is the feed and the nib inside of a little collar would come out. And it's the same thing here. These are interchangeable size six, Jovo nibs, J-O-W-O, -O, and I picked the 1.5 stub because I am obsessed with a giant stub nib. I have a lot of 1.1 stubs. 1.5 is like a calligraphy nib. It, it really gives you super thick and amazing line variation. So I'm excited to ink this up and I'll show you how I do that and give you a writing sample. Um, but this is the section and the section is made of the same glorious material. Oh, look at that. Look at that part. Oh, it's made of the same beautiful material as the rest of the pen. Because again, this was one solid block. It was like a, it's called a blank. So it was one blank and he hand turned this, which is why even the threads are made of the same material. The feedback I have so far is that the threads could be smoother. They could feel more smooth to the touch, but honestly, I'm like really reaching, trying to find anything. It is so so, so pretty. Let me see if I can change the light and even give you a more direct 
like so you can see how it glows do you see that how it just literally all the little flecks of diamondy looking like that oh my gosh it's so beautiful it is so so pretty wow so in the sunlight oh I wonder if you can even see what I'm seeing. It is so, so pretty. There are like little purple flecks. There's teal. There's all this blue. Oh my gosh. It is so pretty. So I can't wait to ink this up. I'm going, I'm going to get my inking stuff out and ink this up and we'll see. What we think of how it writes. Oh my gosh, I can't stop looking at it. Okay, I did to use cross violet. It's my favorite purple. And so I will show you how that works. Ugh. Okay, so when you're ready to fill up a fountain pen, by the way, look at that green um, on the side. And look at that purple, it's so pretty. That green is called Sheen. So this ink shades and sheens. So I thought that would be a really special, beautiful ink to put in this pen. So what I'm going to do is hold this still, the section still, and screw off the body. Okay, and inside is the converter. This one is a cartridge converter fill. You probably could eyedropper this because this has no metal, but I wouldn't with something this special. Tuffy, no, sorry, that's my doggy. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. I just want to keep the pen pristine. So what you do is it has this little black part at the back and that spins. And as you can see, it pulls the stopper up and that's what pulls the ink into the pen. So as you are filling it, you start by doing this and I'm going to do it now. You make sure the stopper's all the way down and then you grab your ink. You submerge the entire feed all the way to the top of the section. So you want this whole thing because this is where that ink's gonna be drawn up into. So you submerge that into the ink and then you spin in that other direction and that will suck the ink up into the section. Now the first time you do it, it sucks a lot into the feed. So sometimes you have to push it back out and do it one more time and see how it's already coming up so much faster. So it had to fill the feed up first before it could fill up the actual cartridge part. And then I just dab it off, wipe it off on this very inky hand towel that I use for the purpose, <laughs> for this exact purpose. And once it's kind of wiped off, then you put this back on, screw it back on, and I cap it immediately because I don't want the nib to dry out. And then I cap up my ink and your pen is full. Now that we've covered how to fill the pen, let's use it. Before we get going on using this gorgeous pen, I just wanted to show you on a more traditional looking fountain pen what the parts of the fountain pen are. So on a traditional looking fountain pen, you're going to, and let me just make sure I'm zoomed out. Okay, there we go. I have a finial, that's the cap, the end part of the cap, and often there is a little design on the finial. The clip, the whole thing is the cap, the cap band, the body, the end cap. And then this is the section, the part that you grip. And that is how you grip a fountain pen. You want the, that's the feed, the black part. The feed is literally those little fins that bring the ink up from the, where the ink is held, whether it's in a cartridge converter or if it's a you know an eyedropper or whatever that's what brings it up and then this little hole and the slit in the nib if you can see that slit down from that circle that's what lets the ink flow out onto the page so the the fins of the black feed here should be facing the page and you should have your pen like that to write on the page some people write what's called oblique so sort of sideways to the page one way or the other and that's okay too but this little ball the end um the tip material the, the little ball at the end for a nib like that um, that's what's rubbing the ink onto the page now when you have a fountain pen like this it doesn't have end caps it doesn't have a clip it doesn't have um uh what well, gosh, I just forgot what this was. I just said this word, but anyways, it doesn't have anything except the body and the cap. And of course it has a section, but the section is part of the body. And then this happens to be a stub nib, so it doesn't have a ball end material. It has a very blunt end material, and that allows you to make a very thick line. So this is my first time using this pen. I hope that it goes well, because it is so beautiful. Come on. 
There we go. Sometimes it takes a second for the ink to start flowing. That is so pretty. Oh my gosh. So it has beautiful ink flow. It has a gorgeous oh, amount of feedback where you can hear that. There's very minimal feedback. And for a stub nib, that's good because usually stub nibs are a little more feedbacky because they're blunt and they don't have a rounded tip. Ooh. There's also more user error with a <laughs> stub nib. So definitely assume any of those sorts of things are probably user error. All right. So we have This one was called the Galaxy Body Style. Eee, it's so pretty. It is super comfortable to hold. This section is really comfortable. It has a section, has a little bit of a notch here that really is comfortable for your fingers to hold. Very comfortable. Look at that material. I can't stop just gazing at this thing. It's so stinking pretty. So this is the ink. Here, actually, let me scroll you down. Okay, keep that there for you. So pretty. Okay, so this is Cross Violet. That's my ink. That is a very wet writer. Wow, that is super wet. Um, so let's just play. Hold on. Oh, it is so pretty, guys. So here's what the actual writing looks like. And let me give you more direct light. Again, I shouldn't have done this <laughs> at night, but I literally couldn't wait. Look. So pretty. Oh, my gosh. Look at that cap. Oof. Stunning. Okay. So now that you've had a gaze at this ridiculous, oh my god, just oh, 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 ridiculously pretty pen. Let me tell you some of the things I'm already really loving about it. Obviously it writes like a dream, so that's fabulous. I love how wet it is. I love this 1.5 nib. It's basically my favorite nib to play with and write with. I love that there's no difference between the, um, the section, I'm sorry, the cap and the body. It's completely smooth and I just find that very beautiful for a pen like this. I can't let this stunning, oh my gosh. This is what I meant by diamond cast, where it just looks like there's diamonds everywhere. <laughs> this is so pretty. And this looks like abalone to me. It just looks so fancy. So I love that. I love the cigar shape. The size is very comfortable for my hand. I really love that. The section is like surprisingly comfortable. I'm really enjoying holding it. Um, I don't have any need for my thumb to rest on these threads on the section, so it doesn't really matter that they're not, you know, ridiculously smooth. They're just sort of normal. Um, they feel like a 3D printed. That's kind of how I could explain it. If you've ever felt any threads from a 3D printer, that's what that feels like. I love that the section material is the same as the rest of the material. I think that looks really good instead of having a section that's like just all black or something like that. I love this little divot that it has. I'm not used to that. I don't even know how they thought of that, but that is really, really comfortable to pinch. And it's just a really comfortable way for my fingers to rest as I'm writing. I think that the cartridge converter is fine. Like there's nothing special, nothing bad about it, nothing particularly notable. It's just like kind of a workhorse does its job. So that's good. I like that it comes with a cartridge converter so you don't have to worry about buying one separately. Okay, I, as you can probably tell, I can't stop just turning this and just gazing at how stunning it is. Like, what is with this gorgeous blue that shows up everywhere? I just can't with this thing. So I've seen bespoke, one-of-a-kind, hand-turned pens on Etsy for years at this point and never pulled the trigger until I saw this one, and it just sang to me. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, look at that. It just sings to me, and I can't stop looking at it. I feel like I'm going to be 
weird with this pen. Like, I'm going to have to carry it around with me and just look at it. And if I'm bored waiting in line or something, I'm just going to pull it out of my pocket and just gaze adoringly at it. <laughs> so this is, this is how I feel about this pen. It doesn't have any indication anywhere on it of who made it or branding of any kind. And what drew me to this pen is I love the Estabrook candy, but I couldn't imagine spending like $400 for a pen just because I loved the look of the pen and not necessarily anything special about the nib. And that's what drew, drove me to look for this one. And this one is under $200, but it's so fancy and special looking. So it doesn't have the, the Estabrook gold writing here or the gold clip. And I think it's pretty much the same nib that you would get on a steel Estabrook like a steel nib Estabrook. So let me know in the comments if you're a pen lover and you know why an Estabrook might be better to spend money on than this. Let me know. But I just, if what we're doing is spending money because the pen is gorgeous, uh, this is the one that I was going to spend money on. So I'm obsessed. I'm sure all I want to do is stare at this. I have one other pen already ordered and on its way that I ordered before I got this, which is just a tiny little Opus 88 mini pen with a coffee thing on the top it couldn't be more different from this so i am happy i got that but as far as like fancy pants fancy pants pens i i, I don't know what to tell you this thing is nuts like it is oh my gosh i can't with this I'm, I'm literally bouncing off the walls excited i couldn't believe it when i opened this box and this was what was sitting inside so i hope that this cross violet is coming across how beautiful it is in person i don't I don't really think it is based on what I'm seeing in the camera monitor, but this is the line it makes. This is how wet it is. Just how stunning. I, I love this pen so much. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review and video, please go ahead and leave me a like and a comment about what you enjoyed about this pen and this sample. If you like the ink, you know, anything you're thinking about this, any questions you have. And go ahead and check if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Until next time, remember, create something cute.